that I don't think uh, the book did a fantastic job at uh, was actually going in and tying all this together. They did get a really good job of talking about uh, the Milky Way galaxy itself. And I want you to understand a lot of the material that is actually in chapter 12 uh, is actually fairly recent. I mean, we're talking about in the last 30 years recent. Uh, now, you would think uh, that we would know more about our galaxy than we do all the other galaxies that are quite literally, uh, you know, billions of light years away or millions of light years away uh, at, at the least. But it turns out since we're in, uh, we're in the Milky Way galaxy, uh, it's kind of hard to see the forest or the trees, if you will. And so what's ending up happening is uh, when you go in and you look at our galaxy, let me go over here since the camera's over here. If you go in and you, uh, you look at our galaxy uh, on, uh, on edge, right? And this is a very poor depiction of it, but there you go, all right? So if you go in and, you know, we're uh, about 23,000 light years uh, from, the, uh, from the center of our own galaxy, then what's ending up happening is uh, when you go in and uh, you start to, you know, look around in our galaxy, or you can kind of see the local neighborhood uh, of what's going on. But the problem is to try to find out what's going on on this side of the galaxy, you're going in and you're looking through all those dust and gas, uh, 400 billion stars, right, in between you and everything else that is on the other side of this entire thing. And it's quite literally like going in and looking through the brush, right? You know, you just can't see, you know, too terribly far ahead of you or behind you, but it's a lot easier uh, if you look up and down because there's not that much in between you and what is up and what is down. And again, it's kind of like standing in the middle of the forest. You can't see around you, but if you look up, you can see stars that are, you know, you know millions of light years away. So a lot of what we have learned about our own galaxy has come through technology, and those technological advances uh, have only been around for about the past 30 years or so. So there's a lot that's going on on the other side of our galaxy. And by the way, this has come up in the past five years or so. Uh, we... Uh, they have learned that our galaxy, the Milky Way, is actually cannibalizing another smaller galaxy. Uh, they're colliding with each other. Uh, the Milky Way galaxy is far larger than the other galaxy. And so this galaxy is being ripped apart and those stars are becoming part of the Milky Way galaxy. So that's something that we've just learned in the past few years uh, that we had absolutely no idea was happening because of our position within the galaxy itself, All right? But uh, we, are, we are one galaxy and uh, out of you know, 400 billion stars uh, in this particular galaxy. But then the question ultimately becomes, well, how many galaxies are there uh, in the known universe? Now, it's really hard to go in. In fact, it's impossible uh, for you to go in and actually physically count the number of galaxies that are out there. But we can go in and we can do a rough guess, a rough calculation of how many galaxies there would actually be. And in fact, this calculation was actually done uh, back in 2001. So what ended up happening was NASA wanted to go in and try to get an estimate of just how many galaxies are out there. And to do that, they had to go in and they had to pick the deepest, uh, darkest portion of the sky that they could find because what they did not want was background stars from our own Milky Way galaxy that were showing up in the picture. So it turns out that the area that they picked was very, very close to the Big Dipper. So if you were to walk outside uh, this evening and you were to look up and find the North Star, it's very easy to find the Big Dipper. It's always just a little bit to the left uh, of the North Star. And, uh, and if you go and you look at the ladle part of it, uh, just above the back part of the ladle is where they went in and they aimed the Hubble Space Telescope. Now, what ended up happening was uh, they, uh, as the, uh, the Hubble Space Telescope goes in and it orbits Earth, of course, and you have to go in and you have to point it at the very same point in the sky. The problem is, though, Hubble is actually going in and it is orbiting 
at about 23,000 miles per hour. So it's moving very, very rapidly. So uh, as it comes around, the Earth is going to get in the way. You have to close the shutter. As it comes back around, you still have it pointed in the same direction. You open the shutter back up again. And basically, you're going in and you're taking a time-lapse photograph that you go in and you digital, digitally go in and stack the images. So essentially, the image that you're about to see here in just a moment uh, is a one million second exposure. A one million second exposure, which is about equal to 11.3 days. So for any of you that know anything about photography, uh, if you go in and you just open up the camera lens and you go in and you just let it sit there and let the photons hit the CCD chip, it's going to go in and it's going to build up an image. Now, you can't do that for very long here on Earth because you know of all the, the bright light that we have. But when you're in outer space, the, the longer you have the lens open, uh, the deeper you're going to be able to see in the, in the night sky. So this was like going in and having Hubble opening up its uh, lens and letting that, uh, let, letting that, uh, that CCD chip go in and gather light for 11.3 days. Uh, it took about 400 orbits. Yes, 400 orbits to go in and complete this exposure uh, over about a four month period. And what they were able to see uh, were galaxies down to 30th magnitude. And you guys remember, this was back on the very first day when we were talking about our magnitude scale. Uh, we went in and we drew this picture uh, where we went in and we had the sun, which was down here, the sun, the brightest object in the sky at a negative 26. And then we went all the way to the other end, and I went in and I had a positive 30 magnitude, uh, which we call the Hubble limit. Well, this image that I'm about to show you, that's where the Hubble limit actually comes from. But I also made the statement on the very first day, you notice, you know, I, I have this blocked off down here because there's nothing brighter than the sun. Right, I mean, we can't, we can't get any brighter than that. But you notice there's an arrow on this side, which means that the negative or the positive 30 is the dimmest objects that we can see as long as we leave Hubble's camera lens open for 11.3 days, right? Which also means if they were to be able to go in and leave the shutter open even longer than that, then you would actually be able to see objects that are dimmer than a positive 30 magnitude. So what ended up happening is, we're going to shut this off here for just a moment. So after they took the images uh, and they went in and, uh, and stacked all the images, uh, they ended up with an image that looks something like this. So this is the Hubble ultra deep field image. Now, I want you to stare at that for just a moment, kind of let your eyes adjust to that. What I want you to understand is, is that every point of light that you see on that photograph, that is not a star in the Milky Way galaxy. In fact, there are no background stars coming from the Milky Way galaxy. Every point of light that you see there is a galaxy that is out in space outside of the Milky Way galaxy. All right, so stare at that for just a moment. Now, when you go in and you start to look at this and you think, wow, <laughs> you know, there, there's a lot of galaxies out there, right? Well, it turns out uh, there are actually even more than you might actually imagine. Because when you go in and you look at this and you start to actually uh, you know, count up the number of galaxies, and in fact, if you were to get closer, uh, you're a little bit far away, but if you were to get closer, from your point of view, it might look like that this is a pretty dark region right here. But as you get closer and you start looking at it, there are very, very dim points of light that are just starting to creep out of the background of this particular image. So again, that means if we were allowed to go in, watch your eyes, if you were allowed to go in and actually uh, allow Hubble to gather even more light than it did in this particular pass, we would be able to see those galaxies show up uh, on this particular image.
So it turns out that when you look at the Hubble Deep Field and you start counting those very bright galaxies, it turns out that there are roughly about 10,000 galaxies that are visible on this particular image, right? About 10,000 galaxies. So what ends up happening is if you were to go in and if you were to look at the patch of sky that Hubble actually photographed, it would be like looking through an eight foot long soda straw. Like that's, the, that's how small the patch of sky actually was that Hubble was looking at, an eight foot long soda straw. So what that means is if you were to go in and you were to take that small patch that it was looking at and you start multiplying that across the sky, then you would have to ask yourself, how many of those images would you have to take to go in and cover the entire 360 degrees of the sky around you? See, what I'm, see where I'm going with this? And to do that, you would actually need to have some 12.7 million, some 12.7 million images, 12.7 million. So what this means is if we assume that every one of those images we took had 10,000 galaxies in it, then you would take your 10,000 galaxies times your 12.7 million patches of the sky, and you would come up with 1.27 times 10 to the 11 galaxies. Sorry, yes. Right, 1.27 times 10 to the 11 galaxies, or 127 billion galaxies. 127 billion. So if you go in, uh, and that's a conservative estimate, right? Because we were only able to count 10,000 galaxies, but that's only because we took an only 11.3 day exposure. So there are many uh, astronomers out there that believe if you were to even double that exposure time, uh, then you would raise that number from 10,000 way higher than what it is right now. And so it would be a conservative estimate to say that we could have as high as 500 billion galaxies in the known universe. So if you assume that every uh, galaxy has roughly about 400 billion stars in it, like the Milky Way galaxy does, well, 500 billion times another 400 billion, there's a lot of billions in there, right? There's a lot of zeros, right? They come out of that pretty doggone quick. So this is what we're dealing with now. Uh, that was done back in the early 2000s. Uh, hopefully there will be more and uh, more accurate studies that will be done just a little bit later. Uh, but guys, you know, when you're talking about a conservative estimate of 127 billion galaxies in the known universe, uh, it's, uh, it, it raises a lot, a lot of questions, right? About, you know, did life arise anywhere else? Uh, uh, you know, is there intelligent life uh, in the known universe, uh, and so on and so forth. And um, I, I think the, uh, the, the answers to that would be probably, right? Statistically, it almost has to be the case, uh, given as many galaxies that we have uh, and as many stars as we have within those galaxies, even ones that we now know uh, we don't even have to have an Earth-like planet to be able to go in or a sun-like star uh, to be able to go in and have uh, an inhabitable atmosphere uh, and inhabitable conditions uh, for other forms of life to actually exist. All right, so there's your Hubble Deep Field image. And just to give you some idea about how big uh, the known universe actually is. All right, questions about 